Okay. Hello. So today's class will be on basically problems being like magician assistant problems, where the problem is kind of like a magician and his assistant perform a trick, and you're asked to figure out how it is done. So it's easy. It's okay. It's fine. The camera is as good as it is. This so I'll share screen. Tell me if you can see it. We can see it. And in terms of keys to respond with like my otherwise I can't check chat all the time. So a couple of useful things will be there in the musician assistant problems and but let's just begin with a simple example to just see what kinds of problems these are. Uh, so so there are five cards numbered one to five and the audience comes in some of the audience comes in chooses two of the cards and among the three remaining cards the assistant picks two of them and shows it to the magician and then these cards are shown to the magician and he has to figure out which two cards were picked by the audience and you're asked to show how this trick can be done so like for example and in all these questions, the magician and assistant are like accomplices. They have decided a strategy before the performing the trick. So the Magician and his assistant, they can't like uh, change the numbers of the cards or anything. So it's like definitely one to five, right? They can't cheat there. Yeah, no, no, no cheating. Like, they just have a strategy arranged beforehand. It's not like they can do any cheating or scamming like that. Like, for example, suppose we just have five cards. We'll pretend these are cards. Also, my handwriting is bad. Excuse me. Will they do the order of the? cards before like like uh, before uh, the uh, the audience picks the cards no the audience can just pick the card in any way so essentially i'll just explain it so the audience okay picks so two the cards. first two cards they still remain with the audience right yeah they remain with the audience so like suppose the audience just picks one and three at random now a main among the remaining three cards the assistant chooses two of them say two and four and so the magician is in another room, as the problem says. And the magician is just shown these two cards in some random order. So and will the ma magician which... and his assistant know like the order in which the cards are like arranged so that like they'll know like from the position of the card what number it is? Uh, not in this problem. In this problem, just like two cards are taken off by the audience member, and then two cards are taken by the assistant, and he walks into the magician's room. The assistant, yeah, all the cards are face up, so everyone can see those cards except the magician and like, until he sees the two cards. Okay, I think I have and they made... totally can't communicate like which cards and everything. No, they can't communicate, they can have a strategy. Like, the assistant, all he does is among the remaining, according to some strategy he's decided on, he takes two of those cards. And then shows them to the magician. He doesn't say anything, but like cheat in any way. Like the cards are fair, uh, but maybe he could also follow a strategy, right? Yeah. Also, the yeah the cards are fair, and yeah they do have to follow a strategy. Otherwise, like magic isn't real. They can't do that. Can I describe the stra uh, strategy? Hmm. It's like, what's okay. the idea of it? Just five minus x plus one, and there'll be two self two self mapping ones and then you just swap those two oh what do you mean? like suppose i pick one and three what are you what is the assistant showing the magician oh okay yeah correct. Right. so like essentially for every of the five choose two ways that a card can be picked the assistant has to have some strategy that among the remaining cards he can pick two so that 
the magician can figure it out. So all the magician is receiving is two cards. And from this, he should be able to figure out which two cards were removed. So you kind of want to pair up things like two cards which were removed by the audience and the two cards which the assistant is going to show the magician. Like it's not an easy problem. Think about it for a bit. Uh, the, okay, like the I have a choose... uh, Like uh, except three, if there is uh, like they choose any of the one or two and four or five, we can map it to the other one, so that uh, yeah. if it is not three and if like it, he has chosen one or one and four, then uh, he can give two and five so that he can know it's one and four like that. Okay. But if it is three, then he can mm -hmm. choose a number such that uh, like. Uh, the one which is not mapped, he will keep it with him, and the other two cards he'll give it. Uh, could you repeat? So, like, if I show pick one and three, you're saying you're going to show the magician four and five? No, uh, two and four. I see. And but 2 and 4 could also correspond to 1 and 5. If I put 1 and 5 also, you're showing 2 and 4. Oh, yes, right. I got it wrong. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, can I show A plus B mod 5 and A minus B mod 5? Okay, that doesn't, doesn't work for one comma two. Uh, because the audience takes away two cards. So the cards you show the magician can't be from that. Otherwise, you just show those two cards to the magician. The magician would get thrown out for dumb tricks. It's like really we need to think of it as you have a bunch of we said this is audience. This is what the audience pick. We can pick one, two, one, three, one, four, like stuff, like three, five. And what the assistant is choosing. So the assistant also like chooses stuff like one, three, one, five, stuff like that. So we could think of it as a graph theory problem, but like I haven't introduced false marriage theorem. So let's not do that for now. And let's just find an explicit strategy. Also, to him, but uh, your idea was, yeah, I said don't use holes. We'll do problems using holes later. So, your idea was kind of on the right track. For one four, you wanted to give two five and all, but the problem was okay. I try. So the idea isn't entirely obvious, and there's by the way many. The mapping is some... yeah, you can just use holes on this, but 
let's not do that for now i'll explain what hall says and then we'll do problems using that later so for this problem let's write one two three four and five so each time the audience member is picking something like say this one and three and you want to pick something among the remaining things so i think this is not really that motivated so i kind of spoil this but let hmm, someone say something um no, nothing so if the audience member picks one three then you can think of this as a pentagon a regular pentagon here so each time the audience member pick something say 1 3 you pick the side that's parallel to that and you show the magician 4 5 yes magic okay yeah and But what if he chooses 1 5 if he chooses 1 5 then you pick the side that is just 2 4 yeah it's how to think about this i think this is not necessarily the best way to solve this problem because it's yes quite magic and there are just easier ways to do this but it's just a nice solution so i wanted to show it so for these kinds of problems a better way is usually using holes so but what is holes so suppose we have a graph which is just a bunch of vertices and like specifically the graph is bipartite so we have two halves a and b such that the only edges that are there are a vertex from a and a vertex from b there are no vertices uh, i mean edges like this or this or this the only edges are like this stuff so in hall's theorem essentially what we want to do is we are given a graph suppose this is our graph and hall's theorem wants to find a matching a matching of a is essentially you want to give pair up each vertex in a two vertex in b such that every vertex that you are pairing pairs to at most one so for example you can pair this to this but you can't pair this also i mean but it now you can pair this to this but you can't also pair this to this so like everyone's pairs must be distinct the traditional way to do this is like think of these as men and these as women but can you like draw two lines on the same uh, uh vertex in a to like two different stuff in b like how you did for the first one in a no this is the graph you want to find a matching so a matching looks like this or something of this sort where each vertex in a is mapped to a unique vertex in b so among the edges we have so far we want to find a matching so like a bijection yeah a bijection so hall's theorem says that suppose for before we do that suppose we had this kind of situation uh our graph is suppose this can we find a matching here no because two are mapped to the same one exactly so in general can you have a matching here yeah 
no for the same reason yes so suppose you have a subset of the vertices suppose in this case we have three vertices here so in general suppose you had some n vertices here their neighborhood which is just all the set of vertices in the set b that are connected to them must have size at least n otherwise obviously you can't match them like if 10 men like only eight women you can't get them all matched yeah. happily and hall's theorem states that this is also sufficient because like we saw why it was necessary but Hall's theorem proves that if this is satisfied, then you can actually find a matching. Uh, we won't go into the proof, and I think Tranchel has done like a lecture on Hall, so you can look at that up later, where he proves it and stuff. It's a nice proof. But for now, we'll just assume Hall's, because it's going to be quite useful in some of the problems that we're going to do. So not really related to magic and stuff that I'm doing, but a problem that will be useful. Suppose we have a bipartite graph with both sides having, say, n vertices each, such that every vertex over here has a degree exactly 3. For example, this. Both sides have ends. The graph is getting messy, so I'll change the data of a couple of people. Okay, so suppose every vertex has the same degree. In this case, all of them have degree two. Degree is just the number of neighbors. For example, uh, this thing has two neighbors here and here. This has two. This has two. So prove that this graph has a perfect match. And you will have to use Hall's theorem. We discussed this. Yeah, it's obvious though, right? Like in this case, maybe, but in general. So like, okay, take k vertices in A, and then right. it should. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, if every vertex has a degree greater than k, then so it's obvious its neighborhood has at least k. Uh, yes. But uh, let's say the degree is less than k for each vertex, yes. then mm -hmm. uh, only like uh, less than k elements can be there to one vertex, right? What do you mean, less than k? Oh, uh, like okay. Uh, this should have total degree, like. Let's say the degree is D, so the total degree should be KD. Yes, of these K vertices. Yes. So you have KD edges coming out. Yeah. So on the right hand side, every mm -hmm. vertex has maximum degree D. Yes. Right? So you mm -hmm. should you need at least K vertices on right also in B. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the wait, point. why maximum D? Oh, I, I should. Every vertex has degree D, not just the ones in the left. I, I see someone asked that in the chat. Every vertex is, this is not a valid example. So every vertex needs to have degree D. Then this statement is true. Yeah, both A and B. So this may not seem particularly enlightening, but useful but let's see an example where this is quite useful but before we even do that let's see how we could have solved this previous problem using Hall's Margaret's theorem so I think I already mentioned this here but can we guess what we're going to use as the graph or what are the going to be the vertices here Because in this kind of magic problems, we want to find a bijection between what is being chosen and what the magician receives. 
so we can take the vertices as the tuples among one, two, three, four, five, or like one, and two, the degree two. Uh, so the vertices are like uh, two cards out of five. One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five. Yes. So the vertices on the left, which the audience is going to pick, are going to be all sets of two cards or pairs of cards, because that's essentially what the audience has picked. And, and then we, right, we can this... have either which one is left or which one the two cards that he chooses. Yes. So the two cards that the assistant chooses are going to be on the right side. So essentially the same copy of this thing. These are both the same graph and the same elements essentially. And we want to connect a edge between two vertices only if if the audience chooses those two numbers, then the assistant can choose those two. That it's but the number of like the number of uh, so if like the audience picks one and two, then the assistant can't pick the like stuff that include two or one. So then there will exactly. be like a different number of uh, uh, vertices in the assistant's column and the audience column. Oh, no, I'm just considering every possible pair. We might not connect an edge to every one of them, but I'm just writing every possible pair. So yes, we were not going to connect every vertex to every other thing. For example, connecting one, two and one, two is wrong because one, two is removed. But on the other hand, one, two and three, five is valid. Okay. So in general, what numbers, what pairs will a pair on the left be connected to? Because you can't pick anything that, for suppose one and two, you can't connect it to anything containing one or two. We can have the combination of any of the three left. Exactly. So, so yeah, so three, four, three, five, and four, five are going to be the three cards it's connected to. And in general, you see that right? because you're selecting among the five cards, you're selecting some two of them. And the cards the assistant can choose are only among the remaining. So they can just choose two among the remaining cards in some way. Which is three ways in this case, like three choose two is three. Great. So every vertex on the left is connected to exactly three things on the right. What about the right hand side? Suppose something was connected to one two. Can we have one four connected to one two? No. Yeah, so like the same logic applies. So even in the right side, it will be three, three, it will be connected yeah. to three stuff. So, exactly. so this one, two here is again going to be connected to only uh, three things. So what we have is a graph with 10 vertices on each side. And every vertex has the same degree three. Right. Does this remind you of something we did? Uh, we need to find a perfect matching here. Yeah. Okay. Why do we, we need to find a perfect matching? What would a perfect matching mean in this graph? Like the set of cards chosen by the audience and assistant should not be the same. And uh, uh, if. Right. So. A edge here is just corresponding to suppose we match one, two with three, four. It's corresponding to what the assistant's response is going to be when the audience picks one, two. So essentially, if we find a perfect matching where each possible choice for the audience is matched to something that the assistant can pick, then we essentially have a strategy for the assistant. Because now, if whatever the assistant sees what has been picked, he knows what to show the magician. And when the magician sees the cards, like it's reversible. So the magician also knows. So the problem was really asking us to find a perfect matching on this graph. Right? Yes. Yeah. So yes, by the last thing that someone mentioned in the chat, 
the last thing that we proved here that in a bipartite graph, every vertex had the same degree, then we can find a perfect matching. And since in this graph, everything had degree three, we can find a perfect matching. So we're happy. Yeah. But yes, this is the pentagon is more elegant. And there's nothing special about five. The pentagon idea works only for odd numbers because in an even number, say six, when I pick these two things, you don't know which one to pick. There's a this. So, in that case, we can still fix a conflict. Like, if the audience picks two and the assistant picks two, then the uh, then the magician needs to pick two, so then it will be correct only. No, no, the magician doesn't pick anything. The assistant picks two cards, which are shown to the magician, and the magician has to figure out the two cards that were chosen by the audience. Oh, that right, idea. Yeah. So for even things like yeah, all the kind of mention it, you can fix it, but the point of the argument was that it's elegant. What if we chose a side? Yeah. So if you picked say one five, this is a side parallel to it, which is two four. So the assistant will pick that. So yeah, this argument works only for odd numbers. And it is a nice argument. Um, but but uh, if there are more than two diagonals, or like uh, more than two things that are parallel to each other, for example, in nine, uh, what if there are an odd number? But then there will be only one that is not parallel. Uh, like, uh, uh, it's nine. One second, I'll just open your chapter. I cannot show. Just a second. Let's. Right, so in this case, okay, you're right. We don't need some more less elegant things to do. Like among the parallel sites, you could say that if you choose CI, a student chooses DH and DH, EG, and so on. But yeah, the elegance is fine. It stays only for five. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. So, yes, the elegant argument works only for five, which is sad. But our Hall's approach, we never used anything special about five. This may as well have been like 20,000. The whole argument straight first. So. so let's look at another problem where we will need to use a similar idea. We need a more magical problem. Yes, is there a Fancy names for this problem. Any guesses on which country this problem is from? Bulgaria? Yes, Russia. No. Okay, Bulgaria is a good guess. Yeah, Russia. I will give you the name. So, okay, the Russian. Uh, by this name? Russian. Why not Carmen and Hobbes? Why not Carmen and Hobbes? Why not Carmen? Which country uses Carmen and Hobbes? Apart from Hobbes. Oh. But yes, Russia uses Russian. Okay, so yes, the language may be a bit strange. It was translated. So essentially, Arachian and Amya are the magician and the resistor. So Arachian is the magician here. So they're going to show us another effective trick. So a spectator writes on the board an n-digit number. N can be anything. We'll have to figure out what it is. 
So Amayat, the assistant, comes and covers two of the digits with a black disk. Covers. You can think of it as just hiding it. And then the magician enters. And then he sees that two digits are missing. And then he figures out what those two digits are. And you're asked to find out for what all values of n this trick can be done. Very big one. Would Wait, be can, nice, right? can digits di repeat in n? Can digits repeat? Yes, they can. Wait, uh, if there are n digits in the sequence, is it necessary that the numbers are from 1 to n? Uh, like, in the digit as in the digit is 0 to n. Okay. So like any number from... Get the number 72 from... Uh, so basically, like, uh, n choose 2, twice of n choose 2, if you have more than that pairs, then like at least one pair will be like repeated something. Zero is a digit. Okay, twice of ten C two. Oh, okay, that doesn't work, right? Okay, no, add something other than that. So let's just take an example of a four-digit number. Suppose this. But maybe this is also unnecessary. Hundred and eleven words. Where are people getting these numbers from? Is the answer a prime number? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna how does hundred and eleven work? Makes sense that n yes, assume n is greater than two, otherwise you can't hide two numbers. But how did you get one hundred and seven? Uh, by the way, is the idea like uh, we look at the left and the right digit hide it? The magician looks at that. Oh, just a second. Uh, Pranav, what did you say? So, like, if we uh, can you make four dashes instead of three? So, suppose we hide the middle two, the uh, okay. assistant, the magician will look at the neighboring two of these the left one and no, right. the magician can see the whole number except like these two are hidden he can't see the digits in but he can see that they're covered like yeah yes. that's what the black disk does you're not removing the numbers uh someone said some value of them it was correct Yeah, because you need to uh, So let's just take an example of n equal to three, but maybe even four. So all the magician is looking at is he sees some four digits, out of which some two are covered, and then these can be any two numbers, say eight and seven, and he needs to be able to figure out which two were hidden. So does this seem like a bit similar to the previous problem we did? Okay, let's. Do they have to be consecutive numbers? Uh, yes, it seems that are a lot similar. I uh, mean, actually, what did you say? Do they have to be consecutive numbers? No, they can hide any. For example, we can hide this and this. That works. Too. No, I'm asking like, are the numbers in the uh, like uh, the sequence consecutive? No, they can be it. Okay. Yeah, you can write. Sorry, the numbers being hidden are adjacent, right? No, no, not the necessarily. Questions as adjacent. What? Oh, uh, right. Yes. Sorry, sir. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is it like uh, the two hidden are like the way in the past question we had the audience set of card and the two revealed? Is it something like that? Yes. So there is. If we try to do something similar to the previous problem. So the audience exits and the assistant to find a factor or pattern. But in this case, the audience has a lot more freedom. The audience, in the case of a three digit number, they can do zero, 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 one, all the way until 999. And what the assistant does, he just converts it to something of this sort. Uh, where the strange box resembles the two numbers that we just covered. And so the, once again, like the previous problem, we want to find a bijection. So whenever the audience picks one particular, yes, so for every number that you have, suppose which it was n digits, then you have, wait, you have n choose two things? No. Uh, the remove two digits must be adjacent. You can't just hide in it. Yeah, it does not work for three. That's some hundred percent. Hundred choices. Ten for each plan. By a hundred choices. Oh, in this case, yes, there are a hundred choices for each plan. Like from right to left. Uh, the right thing each has agree hundred. Yes, so we're going to connect a vertex from here to a vertex from here only if you can remove two adjacent digits from the left hand side to reach this. So for example, this 001, we would map to this. And also every number of the form 0 and 9, 8, 0, 7, 6, everything gets mapped. And basically for this, you have 100 choices. So in this particular case, everything on the right hand side has degree 100. Oh, what do you mean map the two to the other two? Means like a combination of two to the other two, which are not hidden. Uh, in this case, in the earlier problem that we did, there were only two things that like chosen or not chosen. But in this case, the number digit can be anything from zero to 10. So there's a lot more possibilities. And in fact, for three, or as you said, it is two, four, five. And all the way until nine, nine, nine. Everything on the left hand side, what degree does it have? One. Uh, what? One. one. Oh, you changed the digits. Okay. No, even in three, it was not one. Uh, maybe I have an idea to. Okay. No. Um. Oh, it's four, right? The degree. Three, sorry. Yes, yes three. Uh, so in general, suppose you have n digits. The number of ways you can choose a pair of adjacent things, like you can do here, these two, these two, these two, and so on until the last. So there are n minus one ways. 
in general. So everything on the left hand side has degree n minus one. Another is counting every number. First one, then four, then two. See, I skipped two. I didn't say two. Skipping two then fragments. For the SSC, please. For the equation. <laughs> like I didn't understand what you trying to say. To find, uh, we found the degree of everything on the right hand side, it's 100. Because in each of the blank spaces, you can fill well, each is written 10 ways, so 10 squared, 100 ways. Okay, so for the, the most basic thing, for a matching to exist, let's look at this. Whatever graph that's here, like however I draw edges, can there ever be a matching here? Because suppose no. I no. Why is that? Because the uh, right hand side has like num less number of vertices than left. How can we match in this? Exactly. So in this case, the right side needs to have well, at least as many things as the left hand side. Otherwise, we have no hope of finding a matching, even if we know how it's in, do whatever. Right side will have more than the left side, right? Good. Okay, let's see. How many things are there on the left hand side? How many digits, how many, how many numbers can you have? Nine days to four, right? No, ten, ten days. Uh, yeah. 10 raised to 4. And in general, how many? If n digits? 10 to the power n. Yes, exactly. So on the left hand side, we have 10 power n. And on the right hand side, how many do we have? I think we have 10 square into 4 c2. Let's see. Where does the Oh, also, once again, the digits that are hidden are consecutive. So it's n minus 1, not n shift. Oh, are they consecutive? Yes, two adjacent digits. Where are they? So on the right hand side, let's see how many ways we have. We have n minus 2 visible digits, right? How many ways can we have arranged these? Can we create this n minus two visible digits? N to the power n minus two. Yes. And we also can place a black disk somewhere. In n minus one places. Yes. So there are these many. So if a matching needs to exist, what must we what must we have? Yes, we must have this thing is at least this much. So you would want n minus 1 at least 100. Or n at least 1, 0. So we but then the is 1, 0, 1 the least? Yeah, we showed that, yeah, we showed n is at least 1, 0, 1. We need to prove that it can work. Power matching obviously exists, right? In that case, every edge has decreased 100, both the sides. 
exactly so like as we discussed initially in this n minus 1 in this case is 100 so every vertex on the left hand side has degree 100 and the right hand side also has degree 100 so by this we can find the perfect match and that solves the problem There's an explicit one. Okay. I think on the thread, like PCO did post an explicit solution. So what's the last one? I think, I think, I think since we can hide hundred things, what we can do is, um, like, like we can exactly exactly tell us i mean we can exactly know like the even digits mod 10 and the odd digits mod 10 or something the sum of the even even digit places mod 10 and the sum of the odd digit places mod 10 uh, i see i think that should work yeah it doesn't matter yeah, yeah but it is interesting what's the source this is ARI, right? Every ARI something. I'll send you the sources after the lecture. I don't quite remember. So great. Let us do another problem. Okay, so like the past few ones have been related to basically finding an explicit, uh, not explicit, finding a bijection given a graph, essentially, once we rephrased the thing. The next question is going to be quite different. It's not like there are cards and you hide something and figure it out. You would never go to a man. Yeah, that would just be boring. This is why. That's nothing is realistic, such. This one it may be more useful. 2000 points, I don't know who is marking that. Is it ARMO 2007? Okay. Yes. Makes sense. We'll change it, but yeah. So in this problem, I believe so. So a circle is drawn on a board that's in the room and spectators having nothing better to do, mark 2007 points on it because I don't want to waste my time. I just mark six or six. Fine. Let's just mark seven. So now the spectators randomly like choose where these points are going to be put and now the assistant that's there will come and choose some point and will remove it for example he just removes this point and the magician when he comes he hasn't seen this he'll have to figure out he has to show half of a circle such that the point removed was in that so for example, if he shows this half of the circle, that's valid. But instead, if he showed uh, this half of the circle, it's not valid. So like what the magician sees would look like this. He can't see the missing thing and he has to figure out which half it came from, essentially. Are the points equally distant? No, the spectators can mark that however they want. They can pick all of them to be almost the same point. That works. Can they just not fix the half that if there is a point in that half, I'll just remove it. There is no point in that half. Also, I will specify, I will warn people 
the reason this problem is very funny is because there are a lot of solutions that seem like very plausible but actually fail in some annoying case so your thing was you're just dividing into two halves already and you're saying suppose first what were you saying there's no definite half right it could be like anywhere no you can pick like any half this half works you don't have to pick like top or bottom or something like that. no you can't assume they're all equidistant because eventually you have to choose half of a circle if you like initially the points were like this all on basically the same point then you can't just assume they're all equidistant uh, for my one you can just assume that some spectator would be like foolish enough to mark in the other half but what if the spectators are intelligent with more than seven people you cannot assume so many people to be intelligent what is so what if the one spectator is doing all the 2007 points i feel bad for them but that doesn't change the question <laughs> Yeah, that's why they said spectators. Anda is not marking everything. So, in front of your strategy was if there is something in the bottom half, remove it, right? Yes. Yeah, but then what if the magician sees this at the end, something like this? Right. Now, this could either have come from it being like this. and you deleted this or this was here and you deleted it because you yeah. didn't have a choice so you can't differentiate between this point and this point in your strategy also when the magician picks it like it's on like he can pick like from anywhere it, the half can start from anywhere right yeah the half can start from anywhere So, like the problem is quite tricky, although a very short solution. Uh, I'll just like give you a few minutes to think about. Just be back in. Yeah. And no, you have to figure out the strategy that works for every possible position of two thousand seven points. Yeah, that is interesting. Can I just decide a hand gesture? Oh, could you speak a bit louder? I could not hear.
No, no, that's no, that's the secret. <laughs> we are going to like a uh, purely like mathematical way to do this. No scam. Yes. Okay. Yes. This odd okay. matter that is for you to figure out. Uh, how about four matters? Maybe more than matters. Yes. Okay, so like we divide this into two halves, okay. and then. Like, is there a way that we can figure out what's the topmost point? Oh, there is sure. a. I mean, suppose so they can be two <laughs> equidistant. So you ignore this that. Topmost point. No, like it should exist. It was my question. The topmost point existing. Yes. There can be two there points. Topmost point. Equidistant. How would you mean? Like, you mean this point and this point equidistant from the top? Yes, it can exist, right? Like I yes. wanted to pick the topmost existing point, but there can be two, right? Yeah, there can be two. Yeah, so ignore this. You will then say that no, this doesn't work. So instead, I mean, it's fine for something to not work. Like I already picked it, no. So what's the need? <laughs> okay, so the idea is, uh, we divide it into like this only, up and bottom half, and uh, label the left uh, first point from the left side in the upper half as P one. Okay. And then we label all the 2007 points. And then we count uh, that, okay, in the upper half, how many points are there? Let's say n points. So for some okay. particular value of n, we would remove a particular point number. For some, like for one, uh, like, let's say the m is 2000. So for 2000, we will remove some particular point. Label. You remove the, the last point in the top part. No, I'm not removing that. Basically, like we are trying to create a bijection that which point resistant removes and what is the last point in the topmost half. Okay, so suppose P2000 is the last point and all the remaining are here. Yeah, so we remove one particular point, something that sort. This point? Like. We are trying to create a perfect matching. It can be any of the 2007 points. Oh, uh, this is not necessarily related to what I said previously. Yes, yes, I know. Like I was just trying if this some this sort of idea would work or not. Also, so it, most strategies of pitfall is when everything is very close to each other. Basically in one half, right? I have another strategy. Okay. So like, suppose, uh, so the assistant first like sees uh, all the possible alternate points and then, and then like the largest distance between two alternate points and then the, he just, he can remove the point in between them. And then, uh, and then the uh, magician, he can come and see, and then he'll see the largest uh, gap between uh, two points, and then uh, he'll know that the point uh, missing would have come from there. So you're saying look at adjacent points, and whichever is the largest distance, remove that. Like, suppose we had uh, this, 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 this. So, which point are you removing in this case? So then, like, uh, so large. Okay, can you uh, number them? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So then, like, the largest distance is between like alternate points, so six and four, right? So then, he, he the assistant will remove five, and then uh, the the magician will know if it comes from that half. Like in this case, seven and five is. What? Like, isn't the distance between seven and five more than six? Oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah. So then, like, okay. seven and five. So then. And you're removing the point six. Yeah. So then uh, the assistant will know that it's like from that part. But it I mean, could the still be more than a semicircle, right? It, it could be more than a semicircle, right? Suppose this is half of the circle. Oh. 
like the same pitfall when everything is very close together uh, and one point is say yeah like this does give a region where it's there but if all the point is just too close here then this is just bigger than a semi circle unfortunately Oh, for the idea which I presented, you can just like move right a bit. So I think we can do something of this sort. Let's say if the last point is 2000 or bigger. Okay. Suppose this uh, yes. So the uh, assistant removes a point from the upper half. No, from the lower half. Okay. Yes. Uh, Oh, that doesn't necessarily work. Yeah, but it's all 2007 are in the top. Yes. Oh, I no, think like in can... that case. Okay. I think we can prove that if if we just fix the two semicircles, then there is no strategy that works. So I. Does it make sense? Because. How exactly do you prove that? Yeah, but it does make sense because I don't know of any strategy that fixes the semi Yeah. Oh, right. So, like, uh, the assistant could just like erase the first point in the top semicircle or something like that. How are you defining first point? No, like first from right or left, like whatever. Like just going clockwise like this? Yeah. So you're just going to delete P1? Yeah. OK, so now instead of all this, every point is here. Oh, wait. So the, so the assistant is the one who erases the point, right? Yes, the assistant erases. The yeah, point. then, uh, then he they can just have a pre-decided agreement that like I'm gonna pick something from the top, top thing. So just yeah, I'm saying there's nothing from the top. Every point of the every of the 2007 points is in the bottom half. How about something like if there is at least one point both at the top and in the top half and the bottom half, then mm -hmm. uh, my answer is in the top half. And like something based on that, I'm not very sure exactly how it should work. Wait, is there any condition for where the line is drawn? Because he can draw it such that there will be two parts with some amount yes. of points. Yeah, like this works too. No, but you can't inform him of like it's much easier for the magician to have limited choices of what semi circle to choose. But also, if like, also you can assume that the spectators are like super intelligent and they know your strategy and they're trying to like annoy you. Yeah. So they will pick the worst case. And if they know you're just fixing two semicircles, they'll just put everything in the top or the bottom, depending on your strategy. Consider coordinates and delete the one of the largest y coordinate. Once again, if everything is, all points are here, 2006 points are here, and one point is here, then you're deleting this. And that thing is important. Yeah, that could also happen. There could be like a point here and a point here, if that is. How about you tell him to choose the top half unless he sees one or zero uh, points in the top half? Okay. And if he sees one or zero? Then choose the bottom half. Okay. So you're saying when the magician comes, if he sees at most one point on the top, then pick bottom. Yep.
but what if in the top half there are only there are two points according to your strategy you have to pick up the assistant picks a point from top but then when a magician comes he sees only one point in the top and he picks from the bottom uh okay i yeah, wait but it is like not required that he will pick one from top he can have some strategy to pick from the bottom what is that strategy Also, I guess. Then it wants to work out. Is it? What do you see? Uh, considering chords doesn't help. Ah, uh, helps anyway in any sense. Yes, Atul, can you give us a hint if using chords works or not? Using chords, what do you mean? You mean considering distances? Uh, like like uh, upper divided. and lower part, does it yes. help? No, I don't. As I said before, I don't know of any solution that fits. The audience can still uh, know the strategy and just try to oppose. Yeah, the problem asks you to show that the audience can't do that. Whatever you will think, the audience decide. You can still perform the trick. Uh, so we need to consider a strategy which has no chords involved. I'm not sure what you mean by cards. He's just referring to the diameter which divides it into two parts. Oh, like oh, right. into it. Yes, yes, okay. Don't fix the semicircle you're going to pick. That probably will not work. I will say though what Meenakshi was doing is very close. Of uh, just fixing instead of fixing this line, just fix a point here and then label everything P one P two. Uh, can you give a small hint? It's like what Meenakshi said was delete the first clock, first point that you need clockwise. Right. So the only place this and this usually works if there are if there are like at least two points in the top half over here. Can you delete the third point? Yeah, the thousand third point could be like either here or here. It misses three. Oh, I think I have. So this point. fixed point is like is the one that's gonna be removed or what? No, no, just fixing a point for reference so that you, like both the assistant and magician have the same labeling of the points. Oh, so then, so the ma magician knows what the fixed point is. No, you. I'm just saying the. The point need not be marked by spectators. I'm just taking the reference point as the leftmost. Oh, part, okay, yeah. So that I can just label it in a way. Then. Can we do something with that? Okay, so I will say this. It is very tempting to like show that three mod four works, one mod four does some red stuff. This problem works for literally any number. Uh, it would be two, three, four, five, six. It would not work because I don't. Would it help to try for smaller numbers? Okay, so let's pick how many, how small do you want to start with? Two. We can start two, with three. Two. Okay, two points. It would be. Three is too many. Yes, three is a big number. Okay, so two points. And okay, deciding to do it for two points essentially solves the problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As in, like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, now it's so simple actually. <laughs> Just draw on yes. the center. The problem one. is very rushes. Like the other points are not even relevant. <laughs> yeah, you can Crazy. ignore this. Oh. What should I do? Even with two points, it is, it is not going to be easy to solve. No, I, I, maybe for two points, you can draw any semicircle and it works. No, no, that's not. Could be that, could be that this, uh, the point just lies next to the point and you don't know where it is. So... No, but you, you, you take, you delete the point such that the other point, say, if you go clockwise, then you encounter it. Yeah. I think. yeah. How? It's like when you fix the point uh, reference and you're just labeling them P1, P2, P3, whatever. Uh, the first step is to just ditch every other point and only focus on P1 and P2. So if you solve it for two things. Wait, so how better. do you do it for two points? Yeah, you'll have to figure that out. But I'm saying you can reduce it. The main difficulty of the problem is having faith that you can just replace it with two and just ignore everything. Also, essentially, you just fix a reference point. Suppose the bottom left point, because why not? OK. So we can probably not give away. Oh, yeah, just a second. I'll explain this. No, no, let so, it. I got the... No, I'm just telling how you can reduce it to two. So you just consider only the first two points. The remaining 2,005 points that are there, you can ignore. So when the magician comes also, he looks at only the first point that he sees. So all I'm saying is that if you could solve it for two points, then by just taking the suitable reference point, you can solve it for any number. So, so how do you do it for two points? I don't yeah, you need to figure that out. We have not solved it. Like, sure, yeah. Has. yeah. to transform into practice. Can you actually do it for two points? Oh, he, yes, can, can. he can erase the one that's nearest to the uh, uh, reference point. Okay. What if the points were here and here? And then still, uh, okay. Yeah, like, as in if you're erasing this and you say top half, you're wrong. And if you were going to say bottom half, then it's still wrong. Uh, how is top half wrong? Oh, because didn't you just erase from the top half right now? And you have two points somewhere. So you're saying, uh, what was your strategy? If you see two points, then yes, the magician just sees a point, a circle with a point on it, but he can still figure it out. That's the match. So, like when the magician comes in, all he's going to see is. Uh, oh, I think the circle. idea is something like uh, so consider one, the, there are two points. So, let's say consider the lowermost point. If we draw a semicircle in the clockwise. What is sense, the lowermost point? Or the y coordinate. Like two equal. In that, okay, let's just assume, bit, uh, right assume, now. Yes. So if you draw a semicircle from the lower point in the clockwise sense, okay, it does not reach the first point, suppose, yes, other point. But then if you draw from the semicircle from that point, it will reach the other point. 
right? Yes. So, exactly. so basically, we will remove this second point from which it doesn't reach. Yes. And in that what case, is there diametrically opposite? A semicircle includes the endpoints. So, so, yes, so both said, semicircles will have them, right? Uh, no, no. Yeah, that's fine. You can delete any one then. So, like, Pranav, what Pranav said is from both of them, draw clockwise semicircle. And one of them must contain the other, other point, I mean. Because suppose this thing was on this side, then because it's semicircle, that semicircle must contain this first point. Now we are left with proving two equal y coordinates. Hmm. Y coordinate doesn't matter. No, we can just do it by uh, like you can do oh, it by starting off from that thing and doing it with clock clockwise, like ideally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y coordinates. Just I just said two semicircles. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One of them will contain the other. So. Whichever one is contained in the previous semicircle, you just delete that point. And the magician so that is so smart. Is, yeah, the magician sees one point, he just draws the clockwise semicircle from that point. And the magician point was smaller R. Wait, that's a good question. If you have so many points, maybe it's possible to even do a smaller arc or maybe like a quarter arc. But you could probably like make everything so close that it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, it's possible that the one point is near our reference and all the other points are in the other yeah, part. Like the same strategy will fail. Correct. Maybe there is a strategy. I'm not sure. The oh, no, 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 is... no, we cannot do better. So, so consider, say, let's say 2007, we take 1004 points on the leftmost side, 1004, oh, sorry, 1003 on the leftmost side, 1003 on the left, rightmost point, let's say they're all coincident. And then the last yeah. point can is either on the left or the right. And but if we delete it, then we cannot distinguish the two unless we take a semicircle. I mean, I see. the, the art needs to cover both the left and the right. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I'll explain again. So the assistant basically he draws two. He imagines two semicircles being drawn from two points. Like this. Oh. Draw them So now, in this case, the orange semicircle contains the other point, right? So this point is contained, so we just remove it. And when the magician sees the semicircle, uh, the circle with just one point on it, all he's doing is just taking the clockwise semicircle from that point. Uh, does that make sense? Sorry. Okay, yeah. so from each of the two points, we draw half a semicircle, like this. And one of the points must be contained in the other. Oh, half a semicircle, no, half a, a semicircle. <laughs> Not half a semicircle. Yeah, okay. you draw a clockwise semicircle from that point. And because as mentioned, semicircles are big. So one of the points will be contained in the other semicircle. And we're going to delete that point. How do we do it for 2007? Yeah, so there are 2007 points, right? The magician and assistant are only going to focus on the two points that are like first from the left. They're just going to ignore everything else. Wait, also, if there's like a, a reference point, can't he, can't he just pick like the first point from the uh, that point, like clockwise, and then, then you just know it for sure? 
but the problem is like everything could be very far from the reference point so you but in the know. first one like is there definitely one that like it starts with yeah but once it's deleted how do you get back that point oh like, right yeah two two different possibilities are that 2006 points are near the end of that circle starting from the reference point and the 2007th is either along with them or is at the start oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, it is scam. Yes, it's magic, but it's a nice problem. I mean, it's pretty neat, so like, not really a scam. Yeah, I mean, it is 2007 and just software. Too. Uh, it it's had not... nothing to do with the number. Yeah, the number is completely random. Was was it a paper? Like we can just think that for this or any M. Yeah. Also, yes. Yes, sir. This was a P four, as in P four in Russia is hardest to learn. Yeah. I mean, not even in Russia. Oh, nine point eight, but yes. Zero. Uh, will you force some problem set for this? Yeah, I'll send a bunch of problem. Okay, nice. You were holding the yes, butterflies? Yeah, I forgot. I don't, no, I do not intend to scam. I thought you also became Russian. Who knows your scam by changing butterflies to fairies? Yeah, it's okay, so anyway, that's all for the class. So thank you all for attending. It was fun. It would be nice if you ended it with an actual magic trick, but okay. I used it <laughs> magic in the past. Now nothing I did not there. Which really? What were you able to do? Like just basics, right? Oh, or something in triple. Card tricks or coin tricks? Card tricks. Coin tricks are fun. We still do them. Still do them. Like uh, the card tricks you used to do were like eye deceptive or mathematical logic ones. Eye deceptive, mathematical logic ones are never particularly great. Uh -huh. This like this only one I know which is actually surprising. How do you move the card so fast then? Like things you can like literally. Oh, also, I can be in the record.